Hey. Hi. I have Trisha here with me and we're going to talk about meat. We're going to talk about beef um, and I just had some questions that I wanted to ask her to share with my viewers. Um, so Trisha, tell us about meat. What is going on right now um, in the society with meat? Uh, well, one thing I would love the com uh, carnivore community to know is when they purchase meat from the grocery store, they're supporting an industry for the packing house industry. So there's four major packers in the United States. And before I go any further, I just want them to know that um, the people, the farmers, may or may not understand this information. We didn't know about it until we started living um, this life and this being our sole income. So I'm sharing this with consumers because if we didn't know about it, I'm sure there's other consumers that do not know about yeah, it. Yeah, and I didn't know. I didn't know anything about any of this until I got sick. Yeah. So there's four packers in the United States and the packers are the people that bring the animals in. They slaughter, they process, and then they distribute to grocery stores. And that's where you buy your meat when you buy your store uh, grocery store meat. Like ribeyes or steaks or roasts or ground, ground beef. Anything. Just at like Walmart or Aldi's. Yes. Okay. Any of your grocery stores will have to buy meat from one of these four packers. Well, uh, we listened to a podcast that tells us the markets since this is now our full-time income and living. And one thing that they shared last week that I think would be valuable information for farmers and consumers alike to know is that one of the biggest packers in the United States bought a fake meat company out of Europe for $400 billion. So when you are buying meat from the grocery store, you are supporting these packers. And this is how they're spending their money, is by investing in fake meat. So that industry, you would think, would be supportive of the beef industry. But in reality, they're undermining the beef industry. And I guess what's important to know as a consumer, find a farmer. You have to find a farmer. Mm -hmm. You found us. And you may not want grass-fed, grass-finished, regenerative beef, but if you don't support a farmer, your food options are gonna go away. I will always eat beef. You will always eat beef. You trusted in us and you believed in us, so we will always take care of you. But you need to find your own personal farmer that will take care of you as well. And I think, um, I don't think the consumers understand that there's this big industry that doesn't care about their health. So like, what do you think they're doing by purchasing this random, basically chemistry project? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, after watching the markets, they're not, fee they're not paying enough for cattle producers to make money and stay viable. So they know by not paying as much for fat cattle that the farmer will go bankrupt and be unable to support their livelihood, their passion of growing beef. Whether it's conventional or grass-fed, they're not gonna be able to sustain. And so if the packers don't pay the finishers, the farmers that finish the beef, if they don't pay them enough, they will go out of business. And if they go out of business, consumers won't have meat and the Packers know that so they are ready to supplement that protein wow. with so that's an their insurance it is into seeing the way that things are going to seeing that the small family farms are basically going to be out of business there's not going to be any beef so that they can go oh here's this fake beef yes yes and by by buying meat from the grocery store you are supporting their investment into fake meat. That's huge. Wow. Like, if you want to uh, ensure your health and the new health you found with eating carnivore, you need to find a local farmer. 
you need to develop that relationship and you need to make sure that that local farmer stays in business. And Emily, you got to spend the day with us moving yes. cows here on the spring. This is the spring from Faithful Springs Farms. Mm -hmm. You got to spend the day with us and you got to see what it was like to move the cattle and the day in, day out type of labor. Is that something you would want to do to grow beef for yourself? I mean, yes, I'm kind of a nerd, like I would love that, but no, like that that's a lot of work, you know? And I, I said, even while we were riding around, I need to pay you more. Like I, I literally was just like, I, I don't even pay enough for what I, what I get. I get such a value of these nutrient dense, you know, cows and beef. Um, and it, it scares me to think that I've attained all of this healing, all of this um, growth, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, through eating this way, and that that could be taken away. That could be totally taken away if if the fa the small family farms are not thriving. It won't be for you. No, not for me. <laughs> but I don't want to be the only person here healthy, and you guys are starving and eating chemistry projects. Right. You know. And it's not going to happen overnight. But building the relationship with the farmer doesn't happen overnight either. So I just would encourage anybody who's on the carnivore lifestyle to find a farmer, find a local farmer. Um, and local by local, I mean, Emily, you're two and a half hours from us, three hours. Three and a half. Yeah. But we're still local. I mean, she's able to drive and not get meat shipped. and. That's really going to be the grassroots, supporting the grassroots of, of the industry, instead of supporting all the people that are investing in things that would ultimately destroy our health. Yeah, and you know, to, like you said, just to support the, the local family farm. Yeah. You know, um, and it was very easy. It was very easy. All I did was made a phone call, you know, and then we were able to, um, slowly you know nurture this relationship to find out when you're doing your butchering when it was gonna work out for me how much I need um, and then we were able to negotiate price um, and make it affordable and then I even got to the point where I was able to purchase a deep freeze and so now I only have to come once every three months which I kind of don't like I would rather come see you all the time but it, it's affordable like it makes sense um, it's financially affordable for me to have a deep freeze full of, you know, regenerative beef. So, um, that, and honestly, I think before I got sick, I wouldn't have known, number one, that it was this easy to have a, a local farmer, and number two, that it was this much better. Like, it's so much better. And, um, I don't know if this is fortunate or unfortunate for the farmer, but, um, we have noticed that I need less. That because her meat is so nutrient dense that I actually eat less of it I require less of it than I did when I was eating in the grocery store because it was kind of dead it's kind of there's not as much nutrient in the, the grocery store meat I wish we could do it have a lab and measure it but um, yeah so after um, spending the day with us what did you learn about our operation oh my gosh I learned so much um, so uh, I learned that it is very labor-intensive um, and then you have to um, get rubber boots <laughs> <laughs> I, I went and bought some rubber boots um, to make sure that you know you're walking in the right place but that it was um, so peaceful and so if I felt that peace out there in the field moving the fence um, you know, watching the cows um, move from one paddock to the, the other, uh, how much peace do they feel? Right. You know what I mean? I was out there feeling the breeze on my skin, um, hearing the, them move. Uh, it was just, it was amazing. Uh, and I realized how much work it is with what you do because you go the extra mile to make sure that they have the minerals that they need um, uh, and the water that they need uh, wherever they're at. And another thing about buying from your local farmer is they keep records and data of the health of the animals. 
and so it's not any old animal that is butchered and given to you. It's an animal that sustained its health for the entire two and a half, three years that they've lived here on the farm. And that's one thing that I've kind of um, found that I want, we want to be known, and if you guys can find your own, um, a birth to butcher. Mm -hmm. we, want, we don't want our animals to leave. We don't want them to develop that stress. So that way the consumer knows exactly what they're getting and what the life has been. And I really liked that part of it whenever you taught me about culling. Mm. Um, that was a new term for me, but that basically means that they go through and like you said, they, they keep the data on each of the animals. Um, and then basically that means that what I eat is the cream of the crop. Right. What I eat is the absolute best. It has been survival of the fittest. Yes. Um, and so I'm eating the best. Yeah. And what's in the grocery store is the worst. Right. Like the, <laughs> the stuff that you pass on and go next, like you're passing that on to the people who go and, and finish it and give, send it to packers and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but what you have is the best of the best. Yeah. And we just pulled calves and we kept the very best. We kept the best of peppers to keep in our breeding stock and we kept, kept the best of the steers to feed out and finish. We didn't sell our best. And so if you can find a birth, a birth to butcher farmer where you can keep track of that an animal's entire life, especially if you have medical issues where you're hoping carnivore is curing it or has helped you cure it, that is key for your continued healing. Yeah. And so um, if people want to learn more about you to kind of compare what their local farmer is doing, mm -hmm. how can they get a hold of you? So you can go to our website at faithfulspringfarm.com, the spring, mm -hmm. um, that faithfully runs year round no matter the weather. Um, so faithfulspringfarm.com and you can contact us. Awesome. And, um, and it, it's really very easy. Like it's really very easy just to, to look in your backyard, to look in your area, um, to, to find somebody who is doing this. Um, practice and uh, it's it's not as few and far between as I thought it was going to be um, and if somebody's from another state Emily and I can work together with yeah uh, to find you a local farmer because that's how passionate we feel about uh, supporting the local farm and getting you the best quality food uh, because especially with food security being on the horizon I think searching out your local farm is, is going to be key to, to that topic yeah that social because topic. I mean it benefits us to make any farmer in any state stronger. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, and honestly, it, it is about survival for all of us because right. we're all one society. Yeah. We're all one community. Um, and if, if the, the major meat packers um, just start feeding us this, this chemistry project, then it's not good. Well, and I think that's why supporting your local farmer, finding a local farmer, I care about your health and you care about my health for the business yeah. and it's a mutual relationship. Grocery stores do not care about your health. Packers do not care about your health. They have plan B sitting there waiting for when their, their butchering changes pathways. So I think finding that person, finding that community of people that support each other is key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your thank time. You. I appreciate it. Oh. And look her up. And thanks, guys, for listening.